Hi, thanks for joining me. So I guess today we're doing a vlog and a snake cam here. Um, I have a feeling Houdini will probably not move the entire time because he's been uh, just kind of sacked out. He had some food last night and he's just sitting on his warm uh, spot here. But it's been a while since I've done a video and that's because I moved. Um, I moved around March 2nd and it's it's been a nightmare. Moving always sucks. Um, I'm only partially set up. I'm probably like 90% not set up. I feel like I'm still sort of living out of a suitcase. But um, suffice to say, I'm not in a position to record high quality videos right now. But I did want to do uh, a vlog and just talk about uh, some systems that I quote unquote should be collecting for. Now, yeah, that's probably not a good way to put it because probably I shouldn't be collecting for anything, really, you know. Uh, I have more games than I think any sane person ought to have, and I also have, like, several complete collections that I'm really proud of. Um, you know, there's there's really nothing... I could, I could play games until I'm old and gray, and, uh, you know, it, it uh, without buying another game. But um, there are some systems out there that I think are really appealing, um, but for one reason or another, I've never uh, really collected for. So I wanted to talk about those a little bit, and also just contrast that to the game systems that uh, you know I ostensibly am collecting for right now. So the first system I want to talk about is the PC Engine, specifically the PC Engine CD. Now, um, this is a system that I actually have had some games for before, and I believe I do have at least one game for now. Um, when I was in Japan previously, uh, I uh, believe I picked up, like, the Ranma games that were on the PC uh, Engine uh, CD. I also got, like, the Dragon Half game, which is, like, a, a board game. Um, you know, I was just really interested in anime and anime-based uh, games, and um, the PC Engine uh, is just chock-full of, uh, of really cool... Um, sort of anime-styled and anime-based games. Uh, I think it's it's really kind of a, a shoe-in for, um, you know, a system that I would be really interested in and, and collect for. Now, um, I don't want to draw too direct a line between the PC Engine and the PCFX, as uh, I have stated before that the PCFX is actually a, a bit more of a good way to um, get into Japanese PC gaming, uh, rather than it is to sort of, like, get the kinds of experiences that you were getting on the PC Engine, but, um, but you know, there is a certain amount of overlap uh, there as well, and being a big PC FX fan um, is another reason why I think it would kind of make sense to, uh, to delve into the PC uh, Engine CD's library a little bit. But, um, you know, as of now, it's, it's nothing that I've really gotten into. Um, I still don't have the hardware for it. I've always been intending to get it but uh, I've just never pulled the trigger, and I feel like I've just sort of always had other stuff to collect for. Um, some of that, I think, has to do with the fact that when it comes down to it, I am a nostalgia collector, uh, at least when it comes to uh, retro games. And the PC Engine is nothing that myself nor my friends ever had. Uh, none of us even really had a TurboGrafx-16. I, I knew one guy in high school that ended up getting a turbo graphics and i like i never played it i think i went over to his house and i played like the sega master system which also i um you know hadn't really had a chance to play but i don't even think i ever played the turbo graphics so um so yeah that's where the pc uh, engine is for me um the next game that i think you know system that i think would make a lot of sense uh, for me to collect for and i think i would really enjoy is the wonder swan Probably specifically the Wonder Swan color. Now, this has been recommended to me before uh, by viewers of this channel, and you know, thank you very much for that. And I think you guys are, are spot on. Um, the cool thing about the Wonder Swan is it's it's Bondi's uh, handheld, so all of Bondi's properties um, are kind of fair game on that that handheld. And you know, additionally, like it also had other third party developers. You know, uh, I think Square Soft had a like a really cool. Uh, I think it was a Final Fantasy themed version of the Wonder Swan crystal or whatever it was, and um, yeah, you know, the, it's it's a cool system. Um, you know, whereas like the Bandai, I believe it was the Pladia, which actually I have always really been interested in. Even like when it first came out, I was like, oh weird, like Bandai made a system. It's the Pladia, and it's got like some Sailor Moon games and some Dragon Ball games. And honestly, I think they all seem sort of 
not that good, but I've always been kind of interested in that, just from a collection, collector perspective, I guess. Um, the Wonder Swan, just, I don't know if I just wasn't into handheld gaming all that much back then, which I think is true, and, um, it just wasn't really on my radar, I just, and I was never very interested in it, but in retrospect, I think, um, it has a lot of cool games that I would really enjoy checking out, and, you know, I don't think it's one of those things that's gotten, like, expensive to collect for or anything, so, um, you know, I think collecting for the Wonder Swan and the Wonder Swan color would probably make a lot of sense for me. Uh, it's just something I've never gotten into. It's just been on, on the back burner. Um, and, you know, again, um, well, I guess this next system is something that I probably have less of an excuse because I don't uh, own the hardware for PC Engine CD or the Wonder Swan, but I do for the FM Towns Marty. Um, the FM Towns Marty is a consoleized version of an FM Towns computer. And uh, basically, it's it, it's kind of a good gateway into uh, Japanese PC gaming because uh, it is made to just run the games. You know, you're just gonna uh, it has a, a controller for it. Um, you have video out, um, so you know you don't have to hook it up to a monitor, just hook it up to a TV, and you can play the the games. Now, only some games um, that worked on the FM Towns computers would work on the Marty, and I got this system in Japan way back. Uh, I probably got it in like the late 90s or the early aughts. Now, uh, my memory may be faulty. Um, it wasn't exactly cheap when I got it, but it, it wasn't exactly expensive either. I think it was less than $200. Uh, probably, I feel like it was around like a uh, 180 bucks or something like that. I could be wrong. Maybe it was like 250 or something, but it's it's it wasn't uh, it wasn't outrageous at any rate. And um, you know, shortly after I got it, I've talked about this before, the, the drive belt uh, was bad on it, even back then. So I've since gotten a replacement drive belt. Uh, I still haven't put it on, <laughs> but, you know, I, I basically got like four games for it. And I think at the time I I just picked games like that said Marty on them. And I think some of them said like, not for use with the Marty. <laughs> so, you know, these are the kinds of situations you can get yourself into. Uh, I've definitely played a game, singular, on the system that did work, um etc. But it's just something I've never really gotten into, and I, and I feel a bit neglectful as a, a, a Marty owner. Um, really just sort of like never collecting uh, PC games to, to play on the Marty, never really like getting into uh, the system very much. Um, you know, Even though it, it needs a repair, I mean it's like a super simple repair, it takes me like two seconds. So um, so that's that's one that I, you know, I'm a little a little regretful uh, about, and really, I you know, I ought to collect uh, some, some more games for that. Um, but, you know, let's contrast um, those two systems that I am collecting for. And, you know, kind of ostensibly, I mean, um, we're talking retro systems, and I haven't been doing a lot of retro collecting, uh, or even pickups um, that much recently, but uh, I am collecting actively for the Game Gear. Now, um, I think that sort of uh, links into that nostalgia thing, where I got a Game Gear way back. Uh, I didn't get it when it was, like, contemporary, but I got it kind of when they were doing a revival of it, just because it was cheap. I think uh, Kmart or something bought a whole bunch of stock and just sort of, like, um, were selling them as, as a budget thing. Because uh, I think the sticker on it says, like, they're $40 when, when I got it. Um, but I always intended to play it and get into it, and I never did. So uh, I'm getting a chance now to go back and do that. And that's really fun. Um, you guys probably remember seeing my pickups with Game Gear games in them. And I'm so glad, actually, that I have picked up most of the uncommon uh, and slightly rare games for the system that came out in North America. Um, there are some, like, kind of super rare ones that I don't have, and like, a whole bunch of commons that I don't have either, and, like, a couple, a couple of the uncommons I still don't have. So... I mean, you can tell my goal is probably kind of to have a complete North American collection for that, too. Whether it's going to be complete or not, I don't know. But I have a feeling I'll just pick up the, like, the commons and just fill, finish out the couple uncommons that I have. Because it's not, like, it's just something I'll do probably over the next couple of years. Um, and there's actually a lot of J uh, Japanese games that were released for the system that look super cool. Uh, and you can play them on the North American hardware, as far as I know. So I'm actually really interested in, in getting a little bit of a uh, Japanese um, Game Gear collection as well. So, um, you know, compare that to the Wonder Swan Color, like something that I never um, really had a lot of interest in in the past, to like the Game Gear, something I did have a lot of interest in. 
uh, in the past. And even just from a hardware perspective, I mean, the screen isn't the greatest thing in the world, but I've actually gotten quite used to playing on it, and I love the backlight and everything. You know, it's not the greatest portable in the world, but you plug it into the wall, and it's like an amazing, it's an amazing little handheld. I, I really, uh, I really enjoy it. Um, and the other thing I collect for is the Dreamcast. Um, you guys know that that has become something that is uh, important to me, I think, uh, personally, just as, as a game collector. Um, it's definitely something I played with my friends a bunch when it was contemporary. Uh, I got my own system sort of like shortly after it started getting phased out, which was, of course, like way too soon. And, um, and I collected a whole bunch of the games uh, back then when they were being clearanced out. I collected probably about half of the North American uh, collection. So um, now I'm sort of delving into the Japanese games that I think look interesting on the Dreamcast. And I maybe haven't been doing that as actively uh, recently as I have uh, a few years ago. But, um, you know, I have a list. There's probably about a hundred more games that I'm particularly interested in, in on the system. And then maybe uh, like a hundred games after that, if I was interested in having a, a complete collection that included uh, not just the North American releases, but also like basically like one version each of all of the games that came out on the Dreamcast. And again, you know, that gets dicey when you get into some of the weird stuff, uh, so I don't know, but, um, but that's a possibility, and it's something I'm still interested in collecting for, um, you know, and again, so, like, compare that to, like, the PC Engine CD, I, I don't have the hardware for it, I don't have any nostalgia for it, um, and I think you can see why, uh, the, the Dreamcast has just taken, uh, precedent for me, getting the Japanese releases on that, more than, like, maybe delving into the PC Engine CD library, despite the fact that I think the PC Engine CD library seems super cool. So, um, so that's a bit of, uh, I guess the systems that I, I sort of, quote-unquote, should be collecting for, and, uh, you know, and I think a little bit of, uh, kind of why I'm, why I'm not, uh, and just where I am with collecting. So, uh, I'd be really curious to know if you guys have similar systems where you either you own the system and you just aren't buying games for it, be like you think you really should, or, uh, you know, systems that you, you just don't have the hardware for, or you've never had or played, but you're interested in, you're just not collecting them for whatever reason. I'd be really curious to know, you know, why you think that is, or what, what, what are sort of your systems that you're like, man, I, why am I not collecting for this, you know? And, um, you know, or even just like what your, what your current, um, you know, focuses are in terms of retro game uh, collecting, if that's something you're into. So, uh, anyway, I'd uh, love to hear about it in the comments below. Um, you know, I'd love to see video responses, if that's something you're interested in. And uh, thank you so much for